page 103 question 35 what is the significance of macbeth's address to the dra- dagger answer the dagger is invisible to the audience macbeth sees a dagger floating in the air and visible to him it is pointing to duncan's chamber the dagger is thus the projection of macbeth's tortured conscience it is subjective question 36 had he not resembled my father as lie slept i had done it had he not resembled my father as he slept i had done it give the context of the remark and bring out the character of the speaker as revealed in the line answer lady macbeth is awaiting her husband's return after the murder of duncan she hears the shriek of the owl she has taken wine to nerve herself she hears a noise made by macbeth she is afraid that macbeth is confounded by the attempt she says that the face of duncan resembles the face of her father and so she could not do the murder the line shows the essential womanliness of lady macbeth the daughter image comes up to her mind just as in the earlier scene the mother image occurs as she thinks of cruel action for the sanctity of pledge she has an incipient daughter within her question 37 quote i have done the deed unquote what deed is referred to how does the speaker react to the deed answer the deed refers to the murder of duncan macbeth commits the murder almost in a trance he lapses into brooding and raves and is full of remorse question 38 to know my deed it were best not know myself who says this what does he mean answer this is said by macbeth after the murder of duncan macbeth is wrapped and lapses into brooding lady macbeth asks him not to be lost so poorly in thought macbeth answers that it were better for me to remain permanently lost lost within quotes in thought than to be fully conscious of the nature of my deed question 39 it was a rough night who says this what night is referred to how is the night described by another speaker answer macbeth describes the night of the murder of duncan he describes it in a simple sentence he describes it in a simple sentence with a simple word rough lennox however describes it as unruly unruly within quotes chimneys were blown down lamentings were heard in the air strange screams of death and terrible accents predicting dire destruction were heard also the owl clamored the owl clamored all through the night earth was shaking as if in fever all these are signs of some impending disaster question 40 confusion now hath made his masterpiece who said this what is the confusion referred to what does within quotes masterpiece mean here how does the speaker express his feelings about this confusion answer macduff says this when he discovers mother duncan lying in a pool of blood he is so puzzled and dismayed by this discovery that he expresses it in emotional hyperbolic language The repetition of the word horror shows that he is emotionally shaken. Destruction has done its deadliest work. The murder of a king is the deadliest work of destruction. A king is a divine representative. Murder of a king is a sacrilegious act. The king is in the temple of God. Page 104 He further says that if he sees the murdered Duncan one will be turned to stone just as 
the site of Medusa turns one to stone in brackets. Macduff is so emotionally disturbed that he says that the mother of Duncan predicts the last day of judgment. Question 41 Within quotes Woe, alas! What is in our house? Who says this and about what? Does it show any weakness on the part of the speaker? Answer Lady Macbeth says this when she hears the news of the murder of Duncan. She strikes a false note. Her remark suggests that the murder of Duncan is not so unhappy in itself, but it is sad because it has taken place in her house. Now she cannot act well. She shows signs of nervousness. She cannot disguise her feelings and deceive the time as she has instructed her husband. Question 42 Wherefore did you so? Who asks this question and why? How does the man addressed reply to the question? Is the reply convincing? How, sorry, what does the question imply? Answer Macduff asks this question of Macbeth when the latter says that he has killed the chamberlains of Duncan out of fury. He explains that no man can be wise, neutral and temperate and at the same time amazed, furious and loyal. He saw Duncan lying in a pool of blood and he was so amazed and furious that he could not control himself. His love of Duncan outran his reason. He saw the murderer smeared with blood were lying there. He killed them out of fury and impatience. He now re repents his fury. This explanation is rather laboured and sounds artificial. This is uttered in such violent and verbose language that its artificiality becomes prominent. Macduff asks this question because his suspicion is roused. Macbeth should not have killed the sleeping chamberlains. The Chamberlains could have given them clues to the murder had they been alive. Question 43 And thence, against the undivulged pretense I fight of treasonous malice. Who says this? And what does he mean? What is meant? Answer Banco says this. He means that he will expose and fight the unknown designs of malicious traitor who has murdered Duncan. It is a solemn promise made by Banco. Question 44 To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. Who says this and to whom? What does the speaker mean? Answer Malcolm says this to his brother Donald Bain. Their royal father is muddered, all the lords are busy lamenting, their sorrows are feigned, but they who are Duncan's sons keep silent. False man can easily show their unf show his unfelt sorrow. Question 45 What are the abnormalities seen in nature and the animal world on the night of Duncan's mother? Who do they portend? Answer there were fierce tempest and rains, chimneys were blown down and strange screams of death were heard. Darkness had pervaded the following day. This is unnatural. A falcon was preyed on by a mousing owl. Duncan's horses, most beauteous and obedient, obedient turned wild, and horses did eat each other. Amazement and mystery pervaded the whole atmosphere. The unnatural act of murder has disrupted the natural and the animal worlds. Order in disorder symbolisms heighten the enormity of the crime. Page 105 Question 46 Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Who says this and to whom and in what circumstances? What is the image here and what is the tone of the speaker? Answer. 
Macduff says this to Ross when the latter expresses his desire to join Macbeth's coronation at Scone. Macduff will not attend this coronation. This refusal to attend the coronation of the new king amounts to disobedience and open revolt. Macbeth has been named, named within quotes, the king, and it is a citizen's duty to offer royalty sorry to offer loyalty to the new king lennox is an ordinary loyal citizen who accepts the accomplished fact but macduff is brave he cannot accept macbeth as a king because he is now convinced that macbeth is not the lawful king malcolm is the legitimate king macduff's tone here is ironical he says to ross that if he does not attend the coronation of the new king then the old regime that is the regime of duncan would seem more comfortable and thus the new king would be annoyed a common citizen cannot annoy a king and thus endanger his life the imagery is that of the clothes old robes fit easier than the new robes question 47 but hush no more who utters these words and in what connection what does the speaker mean answer banco says these words in his soliloquy banco thinks that the predictions of the witches for macbeth have been fulfilled he has become king so his prediction of the sorry so the prediction so the prediction of the witches about him that he will be the father of kings may be a reality Banco hears the footsteps of men coming and so he stops. It may mean that Banco tries to resist the temptation that seizes him. Question 48. Ride you this afternoon? Who says this question and to whom? What does he ask? Sorry. Why does he ask the question? Answer. Macbeth asks this question to Banco. He asks this question in order to He asks this question in order to know the whereabouts of Banco in the afternoon. He asks the question suddenly in the course of his other discussions. He manages tactfully to elicit from Banco information about his movements. He plans his mother. Here Macbeth has degenerated into a trickster, a mean, cunning fellow. Question 49. Quote, my genius is rebuked unquote. who says this what is meant by genius in what connection is this said answer this is said by macbeth in a soliloquy he speaks about his fears of banco he says that in the presence of banco his spirit is rebuked here genius within quotes means spirit His passionate nature suffers by contrast with the restraint shown by Banco. Within quotes Banco remembers his meeting with the witches. Question 50 Knots had all spent. Who says this? How does it reveal the mental condition of the speaker? <coughs> Answer Lady Macbeth says this. She says that nothing is gained but they have lost all it reveals the depth of despair and sorrow they that is macbeth and lady macbeth have got the throne which they desired but they have lost peace of mind question 51 we have scotched the snake not killed it who says this what does he mean by snake within quotes what does the speaker mean answer Macbeth says this by snake he means dangers the killing of duncan is just wounding the snakes not killing it and the dangers are there macbeth fears banco and his son fleance the which is predicted that dan that banco will be the father of kings page 106 question 52 Duncan is in his grave after life's full fitful fever he sleeps well who says this and when 
how does it reveal how does it reveal the state of mind of the speaker answer macbeth says this macbeth is t o r m e n t e d with tortures of conscience moods of this depression and despair attack him and this opposite mood come from the same source tortured conscience conscience he now envies his own victim in his death magnet sleep well but he cannot sleep he has got the throne but lost his soul and peace of mind